welcome to Entrepreneur State of Mind. I'm your host, uh, Dr. Dale Caldwell. Um, we have Nicholas Erb and Greg Howard, two uh, incredible individuals involved with Bunker Labs, but they have their own construction business, and so we're going to learn a lot about them. Welcome, Nicholas and Greg. Thank you so much for having us here, Dale. Um, you know, I'm a G New Jersey native. Uh, grew up in Sparta, New Jersey. Um, went to William Patterson College before joining the United States Marine Corps, and uh, we're really happy to be here. Our company is CrewBuilder.io. It is uh, powered by Trendlot Inc., mm -hmm. and I'm here with my co-founder, Greg Howard. And Greg, it's, where'd you grow up? Where'd you grow up? I grew up in uh, San Jose, California, nice. sort of uh, on the other coast, if you will. Um, I went to uh, California State University, Chico. Uh, I served in the United States Army, uh, mostly in the 82nd Airborne. Um, and uh, after graduating college, I, I worked for a number of technology companies and startups and uh, was happy to connect with Nick. Well, well you guys have a great business, and, and I, but I want to start with Bunker Labs. And so, I mean, a lot of people have heard about Bunker Labs, but they have really no idea what Bunker Labs does. So could you talk a little bit about that? So Bunker Labs has currently about 6,600 veteran and veteran spouses as members. Wow. Uh, we do two cohorts a year. So there's a fall and a spring. Um, so we're just going through. They're about six months long. And it, I, I run, I'm an ambassador, run, runs the uh, virtual cohort, obviously, with the pandemic. Um, the last two years, I've had and helped to support and mentor 12 to 15 veteran owned businesses nice, nice. and we are philanthropically sponsored by uh jamie diamond for you know uh jp morgan chase mm -hmm. adp met life sir richard branson but it's really an organization that supports the ideation um and transfer of veterans to entrepreneurship and leadership so we really try to support their growth and scale as a company Wonderful. um and go to the next level. Um, I went through Penn Fed's Veep Master Program, mm -hmm. which is kind of a, a level up from Bunker Labs, right. but it's a really great organization that helps, you know, veterans are the least funded as people of color and, um, um, and women mm -hmm. are the least funded organizations when, right. you, when it comes to startups. Uh, this Thursday, we're actually doing a um, panel discussion with Leonard Richardson, who's a professor at Rutgers Business School in Newark. And his whole focus is funding and investment for people of color businesses. So we're doing that a combined, we call it a Bunker Labs Community Connect. And I have some peers from, from uh, Bunker Labs, some CEOs of color, uh, women, men who have gone through this you know, this is a really hard world to live in when you're an entrepreneur. Yep. This is probably the, I'm 56 years old. It, this is the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Mm -hmm. And it's critically important to have a network and support group around you. Um, and that's really what the veteran community does at Bunker Lab. It really creates this kind of positive feedback loop of other veterans, investors, funders, right, mentors, right. leadership coaches. Um, and we've been working very closely with professors like yourself, uh, Dr. Caldwell, that really care about supporting veterans through this process because it's really hard. We all know it is. So it's nice to be able to have a group of professionals and leaders who get you know that how hard this trip is and they're willing to help support you. This is completely volunteer. Yep. Um, and it's given me so much back in the last two years. It's actually how I met Greg. Uh, Greg was one was in my cohort a year ago, and we met. So it, it's very interesting transitioning from another company that I started, MediaMesh.Tech, um, and leaving. And I was talking to other small startup companies and co-founders, and you know you don't know people because it's a pandemic. We're all right. virtual, but I actually worked with Greg for a year, um, and it becomes a very intimate process because. You know, we try, we ask, tell people, you know, on these Friday huddle calls, you can be authentic. You can share your pain mm -hmm. because it's a very difficult process when you become an entrepreneur. Um, and I've been in technology and I've worked for large companies like SAP and Jive and Oracle. But when you're the co-founder and you're a group of three or four or five people, you know, it's a hard road. Yeah. 
Yeah. Thank you so much for for really asking us about Bunker Labs. No, well, and and that's very important. One of the things I'm I'm uh, working with Jeff Cantor and uh, um um and and trying to push the governor's office to 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 have agencies that receive state funding should list on their website how much they spend with New Jersey certified veteran businesses, New Jersey certified women-owned businesses, and New Jersey certified uh, minority businesses. Just put them on the website. I'm not saying you have to do anything. But when you see how little money is spent with these businesses, it's frankly embarrassing. And that embarrassment is going to make sure that they invest. And that would transform the entrepreneurial landscape for, for organizations that have really been underserved and under-resourced for, for many, many years. And so, so Greg, did you want to comment a, a little bit about this as well? Oh, yeah. I, I got to say that Bunker Labs provides sort of this, this safe community to where veterans can really expose themselves in a way that they wouldn't feel comfortable in other places. I mean, everybody has weaknesses, those dark thoughts, those things that keep you up at 3 a.m. Yeah. You know, it, it is a tough road to travel. You know, we, we know that we've all served. We know we've all given. Uh, so there's a, a, a mutual respect that we have for each other and uh, an additional sort of level of confidence and trust that we have in another. Uh, and I got to say that it, it is um, uh, it's difficult to talk to um, some mentors about things that uh, that you've experienced in in the military and and uh, mm -hmm. that may or may not translate into the challenges that you have with running a business. Um, and it is a different and unique problem to have than other types of businesses. And I got to say, Bunker Labs really creates a good, safe space for veteran-owned businesses to to help move upward and forward. And, and just getting back to that diversity piece, and, and I'm a a ferocious reader like any leader is. And there's an article in Harvard Business Review about 40 years ago looking at the Fortune 100. Mm -hmm. And and this is just women, not even people of color and, and diversification. Right. They, had, they on an average, had 11% top line revenue growth uh, w when they had more diverse management. So right. what right. Greg and I are critically yep. driven for our mission of building uh, crewbuilder.io is having a really diverse set of people and that's people of color that are, that is literally looking for people who think outside the box and, and that's what the veterans community does really really well is you know you find it to be just like the military it is a very diverse group of leaders men women all age you know age groups they're latin they're african-american that's it comes across everything and i think that's what builds a better society and a better business when people come to any situation with different thoughts and creativity and drive and strive for the mission you know the thing that really i, I think sets bunker labs apart is is its true mission and it's not just veterans it's their families right you know there's uh there's a lot of veteran spouses they, they are just under the gun as much as a veteran is when they're home supporting a family of three or four or five. Mm -hmm. And I think it, it creates, and, and when I went through Penn Fed's VEEP Master Program, these investors are like, we're not doing this philanthropically. You know, veteran-owned companies are five times more likely to succeed because you already understand grit. Right. You understand failure, adaptation. Right. Resilience, yeah. You know, IQ is really critically important, and then there's EQ, emotional intelligence. But I think what veterans bring to any company is AQ, and that's adaptability. You think about the pandemic and COVID. Right. It's right. truly thinking out of the box and, and with a solution-forward mentality. It's how do we get the mission done with the least amount of risk so everybody gets home safe and we still accomplish the goal and we still add value. And that's what I think Bunker Labs and veterans in general um, in this you know entrepreneurial startup world and I, and I love programs like what you have, uh, Dr. Caldwell, is highlighting that. And I think it's critically important as a society that we start sharing the wealth and start really understanding that, you know, immigration and diversity in companies, it creates better companies. Absolutely. It creates, you know, more, more creative ideas. Um, and I just really embrace that as a United States Marine and as an American and as an entrepreneur. Um, and I'm very fortunate that I grew up in a really diverse family, but um, it's one of the missions that Greg and I have in the construction industry, which literally the average constru skilled construction laborer in America is 55 years old. Wow. For wow. every three that retire, only one replaces them. Wow. Um, and our whole platform, crewbuilder.io, is really about 
driving accountability, profitability, and mitigating risk on these huge construction projects. Um, it's a $1.6 trillion gap around the world. Wow. Technology wow. industry is like the last place to embrace technology. But if they don't, they're going to really fall fall behind. I mean, it's, it's a huge problem we're having, you know, everywhere getting labor. And um, we're kind of focused on creating opportunities for minorities and veterans um, and really looking at the way people can grow within that industry. Very, very well said, and, and I do a lot of diversity consulting, and, and, uh, um, and so the reality is, it, you know, the research shows that diverse teams perform better than monolithic teams, and so it's just good business to have people who think, and, it's, and we're not just talking about racial and gender and sexual orientation, but diversity of thought, diversity of experience, diversity of age, you know, all these things come to play, and I just applaud you guys for, for understanding that. And, and anybody that works with, we have our Veterans Launching Ventures program at, the, at Fairleigh Dickinson University, the Rothman Institute. These are amazing individuals, just amazing in, in, in every way possible. But many of the individuals need some support and, and you know, need some kind of talking to after the, afterwards, just to, just to have a, a voice that will actually listen. And so, uh, and people don't understand what Bunker Labs does and what we do is so, so, so very, very important. So. So talk a little bit about your business now. Tell me about what are you doing, what are you working on with the construction? Yeah, it's 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 been really interesting. I'll I'll talk for like a minute and then Greg, who's the our CEO, should really be doing most of this because he's been living it for a long time. I think what makes us a little interesting is you know, Greg and I are, haven't been in the construction industry for 30 years. Mm -hmm. Um we both slung hammers. Greg works on every weekend on his <laughs> on his uh, lake house doing stuff. Uh, but really, I think we look at this as business people. Right. Um, and Greg can talk a little deeper than I, but I think the way we look at these things are really about mitigating risk mm -hmm. and driving profitability. Most large construction companies, their accounting practices are 20 to 30 years old. They never embraced the cloud because in 2008, 2009, when the housing market crashed, Every like companies that were, were taking that step to go to the cloud and embrace technology right. all went out of business. Right. And I, I know, Greg, you've got some much better insights than I have. So, yeah, we um, so I spent a number of years as an industry analyst doing things like market research studies, reports, white papers, those types of things. Mm -hmm. uh, so for me, it's really important to understand the market, understand the opportunity and understand the challenges and problems. And the construction industry has. Um, um, while they, they embrace new technology as much as they can, it is a challenge to, to change the way that people do things. And that's true with just about any organization. Right. But when you really look at where the challenges are and where the opportunity lies, it's in the, the biggest problem that they have today, which is labor. And right. we are, we've got a deficit of a million construction workers today. And, wow. and that's, that you just can't recover from that. So you have to figure out a way to do better, smarter, faster. You, know, you you got to figure out a way to bring people up to speed faster. You need to be able to implement not just technology on the job site, but technology in the digital world to, to create these strategic advantages. And and they have, and they have done some, and, but it, it truly is a challenge. And where the rubber meets the road, it's about how you can manage boots on the ground, right? It's just simply put, people have to build things. They don't build themselves. Right. And when you don't have enough people to build them, or a good program to organize and measure the, the, the efficiency of what's being built, then you have a true challenge, right? Because then, then you have what happens on just about every construction project today, which is the largest variable cost in any construction project is labor. Yep. And there's a, a number of really good challenges as to, you know, problems as to why that is. One is you, you have to estimate what it's gonna take to do something. Right. Right. And in labor terms, when you have sort of an inconsistent uh, labor force with high churn, it's hard to predict what that'll be. Sometimes right. you got some right. guys that could, you know, bang things out very quickly, and right. other times not not so much so. Um, dealing with unions and non-unions, you know, there, there, it is a very complicated environment. And with those complications, you know, you really need the tools to be able to measure those things, to be able to f see and foresee and forecast where those potential problems right. might be. Right. So. 
when we uh, were looking at, at creating a solution to solve some of these problems, you know, because of, uh, I, I got to say, because of my experience as a veteran, understanding that, you know, when you, you're, you have to go manage people in, in remote locations, you know, much like a patrol, much right. like uh, you're basically managing operations from afar. It's very similar to construction. Right. I mean, right. construction is that you, you have a centralized location and every job site's in a different place. Right. Not just that. Every job site is different every day because they're building more and more of what it is that they're doing. Right. So you have this constantly dynamic changing environment where, you know, true good communications is required between the field and the office. And, and there are some significant challenges there. Um, well, 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 Greg, it's Greg, not just software, it's people's behavior as well. Right? As, as well. So, so, so this, this is okay. a really important conversation. We're going to take a break for a commercial. I want to come back and pick this up because I think... I think this really, really is, is so important at the crux of so much that's going on, not just in construction, but other industries. So we'll be right back with Entrepreneur State of Mind after a commercial break. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. Welcome back to Entrepreneur State of Mind. I'm your host, Dr. Dale Caldwell. Um, we're going to continue uh, talking to Greg about, uh, about some of the people issues and how we really manage people. So, so Greg, you want to pick up from where, where, you, where you left off? You bet. I, I got to say that you know, labor is the biggest challenge. It's not just mm -hmm. for construction. It just happens to be most acute in construction. But labor is a, a challenge across uh, the United States today, right? It's, it's hard to get people, hard to retain people. Um, and in construction in particular, there are actually generational gaps. Um, when you have the average age of a, a, a skilled laborer and a tradesman, if you will, at, at 55 years old, right. you know, anybody that's coming in that's new, you're talking about some very serious generational gaps. And so you know, the use of a cell phone, I mean, we, in doing some of the research in preliminary in, in our uh, product design, we, we got to talk to some of these guys, we call them flip phone guys. And they're these old sort of construction <laughs> workers, the tradesmen that have you know, been doing it for you know, 50 years. Um, but they, you know, you know, this is something that they consider as an annoyance, right? Even though today it's like a, a pretty critical tool in construction. Right. Um, right. And uh, um, so we call them flip phone guys. And so we have to have an interface where we can text them because they'll respond to texts, mm -hmm. but they won't necessarily interface with, with uh, uh, an application, if you will. Right. So there's, right. Some, there's some unique requirements that in this market in terms of product development. And because of these generational gaps, <clears throat> getting new people up to speed, is a challenge, right? Because it's um, sort of like the, the the old guy versus the the new person, right? right. And, and that's literally right. the, the the sort of stereotypes and and how oh the new people on the on the job site just don't it, it, they're on their phone all the time not working type of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, there are different types of communication expectations, like mm -hmm. 
Um, if there's somebody that's in, in the union, they know what their progress is. There's so many hours they have to get to the next level to become a, a journeyman or an apprentice or, you know, whatever it is that may be in their particular trade. Right. Um, the true challenge is, though, um, because most of construction is going is sort of edging away from from union or at least the, the private uh, workers uh, that aren't unionized are becoming more popular, mm -hmm. mostly because on, on diff different types of jobs, commercial projects that don't require union labor, um, they can they can build things just slightly cheaper or right. slightly less expensive because uh, non-union labor is a little, little less expensive than union labor. Right. right. Um, but developing those people, getting those, them the proper training and skills, uh, you know, the old generation could be told, okay, this is what you need to do. Mm -hmm. The new generations really need to have a clear career path for them. They need to have goals stated. They need to know where they're at. You know, they need to have constant sort of communication in their career. And, um, you know, not sort of uh, some of the challenges and some of the news that has come up, come up a, a number of news articles over the past oh, six months or so, where, I mean, they, where hazing has gone just too far, you know, mm -hmm. way too far. No hazing is good, but, you know, when a new person gets on the job site who is, is new to construction as a general laborer, and then they're trained into being, um, you know, a skilled laborer, you know, how they're treated is really important how it, people were treated in, in, in the 1960s and 70s is way different than this generation is, is accepting, right? And that's why there's this huge attrition rate, or part of the reason why there's this significant attrition rate of construction workers, because they will go to some place, um, they will not have a good experience at that company, and they'll either leave to go to another industry or they'll leave to go to um, another company. Mm -hmm. So, it, 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 so uh, there's this whole... Um, there's a culture change that needs to occur in construction that is beneficial or productive towards onboarding new people. And this is in part how people have to change the way they do things. And as I stated before, you know, within an organization, it is one of the greatest challenges is to change the way people work, right. the way people behave. Yep. Um, you can implement as much technology as you want, but if they don't use it because there's no significant motivation for them to, they, they simply won't. And we, we've seen that in, in some of the pilot projects. Yep. And, and, and if there is somebody that, that's on the job side that just refuses to use the, the system, they, they just won't use it. Right. right. Um, that's one of the reasons why we had to be very cognizant of how we design the user interface, how it has to be remarkably simple to use in the field as well as the office. Because if people can't use it and pick it up, their frustration factor is, is, is they've got a very thin threshold for that. Right. Um, the other thing is if it doesn't work, right, the first time, uh, if it doesn't work the first time, they'll move on to something else. Right. Try to. Right. So, I mean, there are some really yeah, unique. If, Go ahead. No, no, I just think that leads back into your, your conversation earlier, Dr. Caldwell, about, you know, there's an age issue happening today, right? Mm -hmm. yep. And every young is always better, right? But I think what really supports Bunker Labs process, and it's bunkerlabs.org, and the applications are, are, this is the last week for applications for any veterans across the country and New Jersey, especially in New York, that want to be a part of Bunker Labs. But what's interesting is in each one of our cohorts, you can have 25-year-olds and 28-year-olds, and you can also have people in their 50s. Right. And I think right. that's where you get this really diverse sharing of tribal knowledge, because to Greg's point, People in their 50s, the reason we're smart is because we failed and we've learned right, for the last absolutely. 30 years in business. And that's critically important that we share that tribal knowledge and that skill set. And we also would embrace this younger generation's need for a better quality of life between work and, and home. Mm -hmm. And also like having a structured career path. Right. When I first got out of the Marine Corps in college and worked on Wall Street, all I did was slave labor for 12 hours a day in a right. phone, Cheers and Lehman Brothers. Like right. Right. those days don't exist, but it's important that you that you also understand that you've got to learn from the bottom up and that top part needs to support your career path. And I think Absolutely. that's what Bunker Relapse does really well, having this kind of diverse group of people socioeconomically, but also from an age perspective. Because we need to share our knowledge to support uh, the, the growth of our younger generation of people coming into business, be it construction or any you know industry, 
It's being able to share that information and create a good working environment for everybody. Just respect. Yeah, well, it, it, it's, uh, I mean, you, you, you're singing my, my, uh, my song book because one of the things that I'm actually writing a book about this and written an article, this term I call coach leadership. Is that the new leadership, if you're going to manage, especially this next generation, you have to coach folks, you have to develop them, and they'll follow you to the ends of the earth. This idea that I call it the old command and control is dead, and then I call it title leadership, that I'm the senior VP, so listen to me because of that. No, you have to feel valued by your boss, or these folks are going to move to the next opportunity. And it's amazing how, and it's not just construction, how many industries are still living in yesteryear when they're managing the old way, and then they're losing people and saying, what happened? or they can't find people because of their reputation. So I love what you guys are, are talking about and what you're doing. Yeah, it's just, like, just like you said, this younger generation, I don't care if it's Citibank, if it's Turner Construction or Google, they are all looking for the same talent. Um, and that talent cares about the way you treat people right. and the way you talk to people. And just because you have a chief diversity officer are you implementing a diversity and inclusion and equity program within your large corporation? Because just putting somebody on your C-level, that's a chief diversity officer without, you know, the back end programs to really grow and support that. Just like I love using baseball, right? You've got a farm system that feeds into the, the pros, right, right? right? You've got to have a process of how you're attracting this diverse group of younger people that make your company stronger and better. And it, 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 it's great that they're singing the praises at the top, but they've got to implement processes and controls that actually help grow that within a company. You have got to change business culture and business culture requires behavioral changes. And mm -hmm. the only way that behavioral changes can be implemented is from the top down, yep. supported and enforced. Yep. Yep. And this is this is two old white guys in their mid fifties, but we're <laughs> veterans, and our and we worked. You know, listen. If you want to you want to take a picture of our society, take a picture of an army, our navy, marine corps, right. air force right. unit, and it looks like America. It, it really does. And that's what your company needs to look like. Yeah, it, it really does. And the, and the 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 military and sports have been the two organizations where you people have have seen each other on an equal footing. You know, unfortunately, much of America, when you look at, at schools, you look at churches and religious institutions, you know, they don't look like America. And so I, I love what you're doing. I love what you're saying. Unfortunately, we're at the end of time. These things go very, very quickly. Uh, you know, Greg and Nicholas, I want to thank you very much. Before we go, Bunker Labs website. How do veterans get in touch with you? What's the website? So it's, it's BunkerLabs.org. We're a national organization headquartered in Houston, Texas. We're... I want to say close to 35 cities today. I run, uh, two, we have two virtual cohort programs for people that aren't near a city. Um, and we are taking applications for our uh, January winter, we call it our spring cohort, which runs from January 2022 to June 20, uh, 2022. Wonderful. Um, and we do a lot of interesting stuff with Ford Motor Company, do pitch events, but uh, thank you so much for supporting Bunker Labs, uh, Dr. Caldwell, and uh, thank you so much, Greg Howard, my co-founder and CEO and brother, for getting on, and uh, please have a great day to your audience. Guys, thank you so, so very much, and I want to thank the audience. Uh, thanks for watching Entrepreneur State of Mind. We will see you next week.